There's something horrifying and carnivorous growing deep in the body of Way Wilson, and if that doesn't kill him, all of his new enemies certainly will. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop into the pages of Deadpool issue number two and find out together, shall we? So then, picking up directly from where the last issue left off, Deadpool was made the unwilling incubator for a brand new piece of the Carnage symbiote, courtesy of supervillain scientist the Harrower. This couldn't come at a worse time either, as Deadpool was desperately trying to infiltrate a brand new group of international super assassins called the Atelier for X-Force. His audition into the Atelier saw him take a mission to go and assassinate famous Spider-Man foe Doc Ock, a task which has only become that much more difficult because now red creepy symbiote hands are poking out of Deadpool's ribs. Which, you know, is pretty bad from a body horror point of view, but also maybe not the worst thing ever because the symbiote arms actually go out of their way to defend themselves and by extension Deadpool himself meaning that he now officially has more arms to keep up with Dr. Octopus's arms, and a fun bit of writing, too, Otto actually recognizes the harrower and knows that her grandmother was also a famous evil horticulture scientist. Deadpool tries his hardest to fight two completely unrelated battles at once in hopes that the supervillains will be such egomaniacs that it's only a matter of time before they start stepping on each other's toes and hitting each other. For a minute there, it actually seems like this crazy plan is going to work, but two battles quickly become three when we realize that the symbiote gestating inside Deadpool right now isn't his friend. It's slowly eating him from the inside out and desperately wants to try and escape, so much to the point that Deadpool ends up growing a third arm out of his mouth. That's pretty gross, and for any lesser hero, this would probably spell the end. Thankfully, though, Deadpool isn't any regular old super being, and he actually gets some very unexpected backup in the form of Lady Deathstrike. Deathstrike, you'll remember, as a longtime wolf Wolverine villainess who had actually just rejoined the X-Men book fold not that long ago, and as we learn in this issue, Deathstrike was actually Deadpool's partner on this whole Atelier mission. In fact, as we discover, she was standing next to him the whole time when Wade first took the mission to go kill Dr. Octopus. The only thing is we didn't see her in issue one was because all Deadpool could think about was trying to impress Valentine Vong, the non-binary assassin with needle fingers who also works for the Atelier. It was actually Deathstrike who scoped out Dr. Octopus's office and did all the hard work to set up this hit job only for Deadpool to go missing when the harrower kidnapped him. So yeah, Deathstrike is understandably pretty damn pissed at Wade not only for messing up the mission but also messing up her chances at joining this hot new assassin outfit. With the fight now officially two on two, it looks like the heroes might actually have this one in the bag. That is, of course, until Deadpool figures that he's bored with all of this, cuts off his extra limbs and escapes, leaving Deathstrike behind. With no other options and nowhere else to go, Deadpool decides to hit up Valentine at their safe house. By then, the time that the Atelier had given Deadpool and Deathstrike to finish this mission had elapsed, and by all right, Valentine shouldn't take Wade in, and yet for some reason, they do. In fact, Valentine even goes as far as to lie to the Horned King, the leader of the Atelier, saying that they have no idea where Deadpool is. And as the comic comes to a close, it looks like Valentine is ready to put those needle fingers to use, doing some real heavy-duty surgery on Wade. And so that was Deadpool issue number two, everybody, and overall I thought it was another fun, and more importantly, funny outing from Alessa Wong. All the body horror jokes continue to work, riding that wonderfully thin line between gross and hilarious. I especially really enjoyed Lady Deathstrike here being used as the overly serious foil and comedy straight woman to Madman Wade. In fact, I actually hope we get to see more of them in the future because that's a pairing we don't get a lot of and it's one that I think could actually work very well in a Deadpool series. It's also fun to see Doc Ock operate outside the bounds of regular old Spider-Man stories. I like knowing he has a life and research and plans that don't always involve Peter. In fact, the revelation that he actually knows the harrower's family and respects her as an evil scientist and wants to join forces with her to get revenge on Deadpool is good stuff. Overall, I feel comfortable giving this one another 8 out of 10. Very entertaining comic book stuff. 
Hey there everyone, Kate Joel again, and I just want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. It means a lot to me. And hey, if you enjoyed the book I covered in this issue and want some comics of your own, might I recommend Book Depository? It's my number one place for shopping for comic book trades. You get a great price, and if you use my link down in the description, you'll actually be helping me out at the same time. You get something, I get something, everybody wins, right? So until next time, everyone, I've been Joel, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.